In the show, Ross Braun is a smiling assassin, which says a lot about that world and the way people operate. How did, how did he earn that nickname? Um, yeah, it's a line actually that Christian Horner from Red Bull says in the documentary. Um, you know, he says, Ross looks all friendly, but I think he's a smiling assassin. <laughs> and I'm like, you're all smiling assassins. And I think that comes from this idea that a lot of people spoke about it, that there's the racing, but then off the track, you know, there's a kind of, um, not, yeah, maybe fraternity, but you know, they're kind of in it together. It's very gentlemanly. How do you do? Let's, but then when it get, comes to the racing, um, it's pretty cutthroat. But one of the remarkable things that I found in the documentary and in the story of Braun in 2009 is that, you know, the team was born out of a financial crisis in 2008 when Honda withdrew from Formula One. And the Honda team, you know, so many people worked at the Brackley factory. Um, and it was just, a, you know, a, so many people were going to be made redundant. And it was near Christmas time. And Ross Braun really led the charge. He had come on to uh, Honda in 2008 and really galvanized and brought together this idea of a management takeover to try and and save jobs and livelihoods and coming together, you know, they were able to, in working with Honda to, you know, create this deal and this opportunity. And it's something really remarkable to, to see all these people come together and for Ross and the management group to, you know, buy the team for a pound, you know, they'd have limited resources during the season. So, you know, there was a rule change for the car that they had exploited. So they had an advantage in the beginning, but then teams protested the car. They went to court yeah. at the same time. Formula One, there was like a breakaway series. They wanted to get out of Formula One. Um, and yet, you know, Braun had no sponsors. And then Branson and Virgin was one of the first sponsors. And they... They literally only had two cars. They couldn't crash. They had to like, they couldn't get parts. <laughs> and so we follow them through this whole kind of, this remarkable journey, this remarkable season. Uh, when Honda left, they didn't have an engine. So they had to find an engine. They got an engine from Mercedes. They had to fit it into the car that they had. Um, Jensen oh. Button, you know, a remarkable driver um, and had one victory previously. and. You know, he was in his spot in his career. And then, you know, on the other side of the garage was Rubens Barrichello, who had raced with Ferrari under the shadow of Schumacher. And they were in the garage and they were having success. And they were all for one. But then Jensen was winning. But then he wasn't winning. <laughs> this is so unbelievable. It goes on. Yeah. Uh, so invested. I'm going to say, like, yeah, I mean, this is storytelling in itself is unbelievable. Like, it look, so many people are really, really excited for this one. And, Keanu, I have to mention as well, we had so many wonderful comments come in uh, from so many people. Um, but I have to ask this one from Grace. I know it's a little bit off topic, but it does say, uh, Keanu, will you be touring in the UK with your band Dogstar? <laughs> I sure hope so. Good. Yeah, yeah. Good. yeah. The, the band broke up for 20 years, and then this uh, in 23, we did a lot of touring, and, and it's been really exciting and fun, and uh, we're hoping to uh, get overseas next year. Yes. Fantastic. Yes, that's what Fingers we crossed. Hear. Amazing. Well, look, Braun, the Impossible Formula One story is available to watch now on Disney+. Plus. Uh, Keanu, can I just say, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on the show, uh, surrounded by legends tonight. Uh, let's hear it for the wonderful Keanu Reeves.